Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Unfiltered. Pastor, welcome as usual, as Thank you, John. always. Uh, welcome. Pastor, on Sunday, I wanted to speak a little bit about angry pulpit, angry church. On Sunday, you were, you, you, uh, were referencing it. Instead of a church that, or a pulpit that has the congregation walking out in faith and joy, there can be a tendency for those who have an angry pulpit that leaves an angry church when people are really lost and need Jesus, what would you say the fruit of an angry pulpit and or an angry church? Well, the fruit of an angry pulpit has already been said. It's an angry church. Uh, we live, today we're living in a time when I think that we're especially prone to angry churches because, <clears throat> excuse me, if you, have a, if you have an angry pastor, a pastor who is angry over the way the world is, and a, uh, a pastor who perhaps has fantasized that the world has never been as bad as it is right now, um, then naturally he's going to rail against what he sees as being the wrongs of the world. And in doing so, he's going uh, to gather a crowd of people who also feel mm -hmm. angry. And so the fruit of an angry pulpit will always be a group of angry people. And then they go out into the world. And before you know it, they're wanting to argue with everybody. They, they do. They start at arguments with people. They, they begin to become self-righteous because they have the inside knowledge of how things should be. Things aren't that way. We know why they're not that way, and you're not listening to us when we tell you why they're that way. Therefore, now they're angry at them. I, I think there is a time for, for a righteous anger, mm -hmm. of course, when we see what's taking place in, in our nation today, when we, not even in our nation alone, when we see what takes place in our, in our state or in our cities, our counties, there is a place for a, for a righteous indignation. There is a place for us to say, this is not how it should be, and a place for us to speak out against it. I mean, I was sharing just, as you mentioned, just this last Sunday out of Acts chapter 2, when after the Holy Spirit had fallen upon the, uh, the 120 disciples and people began to mock and the Apostle Peter had gone out to preach, he had said, and I mentioned this recently, he had said, save yourself from this perverse generation. Mm -hmm. So I looked that up. I wanted to know what are you referring to? And he was basically referring to the generation as it is. Jesus himself had spoken concerning that generation in this way. He had said, this is a wicked and an, an adulterous generation. So, so he was speaking of the generation or age of his day, but it's also an age that we share in now. It's an age that we live in, which is perverse, it's twisted, it's crooked. And so when a, a pastor comes up and, and points out those things, you, you've got, on the one hand, in, in the church, you've got unbelievers, you've got people who live carnal lives, you know, very often trying to walk both with the Spirit and the flesh. You have a variety. You have, you have believers who are growing, and you have mature. You know, you have a mix. So it's going to affect people differently. So if you're always angry about what's going on, you're going to have a group of people who are growing angry along with you, probably in agreement with you, maybe even shouting out their approval of what you're saying to the point where you begin to think that you are really making a difference because you have a crowd of people who agree with you, and yet when you look at what's taking place in in Acts 2, uh, right after he says, save yourself from this, this perverse generation, um, he, with many other words, continues to speak, and then 3,000 people are saved. So they were convicted. They were convinced. And as a result, the church grows by 3,000 people in one message. And then you see what's taking place after that, which is um, uh, abiding in the in the uh, apostles' doctrine and prayer and breaking of bread and in, 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 uh, and in, in uh, apostles. Okay, now I got myself apostles' doctrine and uh, breaking of bread and prayers and fellowship. Those four elements are taking place, and then other things are taking place among, uh, amongst them to the point where people begin to to be aware that this this phenomena has happened, right? And they're now added to the church. But it doesn't indicate to us that he keeps telling them that they're perverse. You know, or, and it, it doesn't seem to, 
to follow that he starts telling everybody else, you know, we'll just keep that same message going, you know. Uh, in chapter 3, what you end up with is you end up with uh, them going to pray and having the opportunity of seeing God uh, in, miraculous, uh, in a miraculous way uh, heal a crippled man. Mm -hmm. And you see the gifts of the Spirit exercised, you know, during that time. And so I, I would say that if anybody had the the absolute right to be outraged and angry, it's obviously our Savior. And yet our Savior sent us out to a world that is perverse and twisted, is crooked and in need, but he didn't tell me to be mad at mm. it. He, he told me to win the lost. And on the one hand, I get fueled by, by my opposition to and abhorrence of the evil that's so widespread and so accepted, we, we do speak against the darkness, we are the light. But at the same time, if I'm not careful, it's very easy for me to begin to actually be angry at people right. in general. There are some people that you reserve anger for, people who are willfully destructive, hurtful, harmful, hurting children perhaps, and and things things of that nature. There's a place for an indignation but there is no place for me to, to, to not think that they should be saved or to pray for them. And I don't know, John, I, I just feel that we're living in a very mixed up time. Yeah. I really do. And the more you rail against the evil as it is, you're gonna have people who are gonna join you in railing. And, um, and it, it does attract a crowd of people. It can, not always. Sometimes it pushes people away. Who wants to be around angry people all the time? You know, the proverb says that we're not to have uh, friendship with an angry man lest we learn right. his ways. And, and I think sometimes that pastors can think that they are righteously angry when, in fact, they're just angry. So, yeah, I was talking about that this Sunday. Well, you know that because I, I'm, as we wrap up here, I'm wondering what model... Did Peter give the model that he was angry? No, 3,000 people were added to the church, and then they went on and they started ministering to people. Mm -hmm. Where was Jesus really ever angry and given a message? Was he turning over the tables in a righteous anger? Yes. So I, I, I was thinking about this as developing this question, is, is where, where did the anger originate? Was it something that is taken on by somebody who may be self-righteous and saying, this is the only way? Because I don't see Jesus ever responding, Paul, maybe Peter, in bringing correction in some ways, Paul, the first Corinthians, but he wasn't angry. So I'm wondering where the origination came. The uh, origination very often is flesh. You know, it's flesh, you know, be angry and sin not. It's not that we don't get angry, but we need to restrain ourselves from doing things that are sinful. And so, you know, there are, there are times that you see um, Paul show a flash of anger, like when he was he was struck in the face mm. on one occasion the high priest was speaking to him and um, you know he he's God will strike you you whitewash to him I mean you see a flash of his a righteous anger because of the violation of the law in that way so there are times when you might see a portion of a personality revealed but even so when he they said, you don't, do you rail against the high priest that way? He said, I didn't even know he's a high priest. <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of, uh, uh, by the way, there's a lot of uh, comments as to related to that because Jesus is the high priest. Mm -hmm. That man no longer is. But even so, he was, he was acting in um, defiance of what a, a high priest is actually supposed to, to act like. And also, you can really develop a lot related to that. But you do see him rebuking. You do see him speaking forcefully in that way, and it was an injustice. I just am not convinced with the average, that the average Christian has the spiritual maturity to be able to, to say, no, this is pure righteous indignation. Mm -hmm. I just, the average Christian that I encounter, and again, I'm in ministry, I encounter people who are believers, but who don't necessarily exercise self-control or the other elements of the fruit of the Spirit, and sometimes they are just angry for angry's sake. 
So yeah, I, I, I really believe that, that the people ought to walk out of the, uh, the walls of a church service uh, edified, uh, encouraged, uh, given hope, in, in, and uh, exercising faith in the other things, and, and learn to love uh, the, the world that's, that's going to go to hell without yeah. the gospel of Jesus, yes. to that's, love them. Amen. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, it was something I've been thinking about in, and what in real is the fruit, and you're able to explain to us that there is no fruit. It's just anger and self-righteousness. And, and so uh, with that, I want to invite our church family for our services tomorrow evening as you continue to take us through the book of Romans. And communion. And afterwards, we're celebrating communion as a mm -hmm. church family, which is always special. Mm -hmm. We have worship, we have the word, and we have communion. Mm -hmm. So I want to invite you guys to come out and join us. And a reminder that Sunday we have our services at 8.30 and 10.45. Good opportunity to come in come in and join us as well as we continue to, you're teaching us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it was, we were in Acts last week and we have something coming up for this Sunday as well. Mm -hmm. So look forward to having you come out. Pastor, again, thank you for sharing with us. Thank you guys for tuning in and God bless you.